First of all, randomized trials have the obvious advantage that patients are randomized to receive treatment so that any difference between the outcome in two arms of a trial, people with a certain disease getting different treatments, is likely to be due to trance alone. And for that reason, randomized trials are the gold standard for developing new treatments. The problem is that, and there are several of them, first of all, that patients are pretty highly selected to go into clinical trials. Um, generally speaking, people in clinical trials uh, have good performance status. So, you know, they are people with cancer, but they, if they have cardiac disease or liver disease or kidney disease, they're often rejected. Whereas you come to apply the results in the clinic, the patients often have other problems as well, given that cancer is in general a disease of older people, not completely, but the most common types of cancer. So there's that problem that the, uh, the drugs that are developed from clinical trials or other strategies, there's evidence that they don't actually work as well in, in the general population, probably for that reason. So that's one. Secondly, I think there's a problem with the outcome measures or endpoints of clinical trials. There's, most of the trials now are, are funded by pharmaceutical companies. And I think that's a pity, but you can understand it. Uh, and they will use whatever endpoint gets them to registration fast, fastest. And the FDA and the EMA, the registration bodies, will allow them to use endpoints like progression-free survival. Well, I don't think it's a big success if you delay progression a bit, but you add toxicity and you don't actually change life expectancy or overall survival. So I think that's a problem. These are not good surrogate endpoints for the two things we really want to do, which is either make patients live longer or have a better quality of life. So that is uh, uh, another problem. I think the a third problem is the analysis that we are now analyze by statistics that basically if any if there is a significant difference between the outcomes of two arms uh, then the FDA and the EMA in their wisdom will usually approve those uh, those therapies uh, and, and new treatments always cost a lot of money and that and the amount they cost doesn't bear any relationship to their effectiveness so uh, what has happened is trials have got bigger because with bigger trials, you can detect a smaller and smaller effect size, and they will market uh, drugs or new treatments based on very small effect sizes, often with increased toxicity. And it's, I think people are, uh, are faced with the, you know, you have a treatment, yes, it's statistically better, but is it really of clinical importance? Now, ESMO and ASCO have introduced value scales, which I think are very important development. We have, we, I was involved with a paper with other people recently where we looked at the proportion of positive trials that met the ESMO criteria of value, and about only one, about one-third of positive trials did that, you know, value implying that the effect size was clinically important and the toxicity didn't outweigh the, the benefits. So I think that is uh, another very important thing, that we need to be doing better trials, and we need to... We need to have effects that are clinically important and not just statistically significant.